I am so glad you're here, because today we're embarking on a journey through the illuminating world of imines and enamines, a continuation of our discussion on nucleophilic addition reactions. We'll also learn about the Wolf-Kishner reduction, a method used to convert carbonyl functional groups into alkyl chains. And if you want to ace your next orgo exam, stick around for the practice problems at the end. Imines and enamines are pivotal functional groups in organic chemistry. They are both derived from carbonyl compounds, which is where you have a carbon to oxygen double bond. In the imine structure, instead you have a carbon to nitrogen double bond, and for enamines you have a carbon to nitrogen single bond, but that carbon is an alkene. Now let's talk about the intricate dance or the mechanism with which we form imines. We always start with a carbonyl compound. From here, we always need to introduce a primary amine. Remember that primary amines are so named because they're attached to a single R group or alkyl chain. The other atoms attached to nitrogen are going to be hydrogen atoms. From here, the nucleophilic carbon can attack this carbonyl carbon, freeing the pi electrons to be migrated to the oxygen atom. And from here, this gives us a negatively charged oxygen species and a positively charged nitrogen species. And at this point, we should note that all imine formations are done under the presence of an acid. So if we have an acid, this can protonate, the, the acid can be deprotonated by the negatively charged O-, and therefore this would generate a new alcohol species. So once we have generated this alcohol species, what you should notice is that we still have this positively charged nitrogen atom, which then, since we are forming the conjugate base in the deprotonation of the acid, what can then happen is that we can have deprotonation of this positively charged nitrogen species. And from there, this is going to generate a neutral compound where we have an alcohol and we have, since these electrons come down to the nitrogen, we now have a neutral amine. At this point, remember that we're still in acid, so we have regenerated our acid. And for that reason, what can happen, just like we've learned in similar mechanisms, is that the alcohol will be attracted via electrostatic attractions to this proton, allowing us to generate a good leaving group. And this good leaving group is going to form via a positively charged oxygen species, and where we're left with our primary amine. Now importantly, remember that these delocalized pi electrons can come down to form a new pi bond and help us kick off our good leaving group. And in doing so, this is going to generate an iminium ion, where now we are left with a positively charged iminium ion. So this is called an iminium ion, and notice how it's related to imine. Now remember, we protonated using the acid, and this left behind another conjugate base, which we're just denoting as A-, minus, which can then come in and deprotonate that proton contained on the iminium ion, giving us our lone pair of electrons and allowing us to generate our imine species, which looks identical to what we were desiring. The mechanism to form enamines is also very similar. You'll note that we'll start with the exact same carbonyl compound. One notable difference, though, is that when forming enamines, the starting material amine is actually a secondary amine, where there are two R groups attached to the nitrogen. Remember, though, this nitrogen is still nucleophilic, which will attack the carbonyl carbon, allowing us to generate a very similar intermediate that we formed in the mechanism for imines, where now you have formed this negatively charged oxygen species that has three lone pairs. We still have a positively charged amine species, and we also still have our acid. So notably, in both of these mechanisms, we need to be under acidic conditions. So remember, the negatively charged oxygen will attack that proton, allowing us to generate the conjugate base. So this creates our newly formed alcohol, and then we're still left with our positively charged nitrogen-containing species. But again, we still have this conjugate base, and that conjugate base can do the same as previously, where it will deprotonate that hydrogen, allowing us to place a lone pair on the nitrogen, creating a neutral compound. And in doing so, now we have another very similar structure to what we've seen previously. However, in this case, now we have formed a tertiary amine. Now remember, we have thus regenerated our acid, which we started with, which will be deprotonated by the alcohol, 
generating our conjugate base. So now we have formed a good leaving group again in this H2O that is positively charged. And from here, remember, we still have our amine that has a lone pair, which can come down, create a new pi system, and kick off this good leaving group. And in doing so, what that will leave behind is another aminium ion where we're going to have a positively charged nitrogen. Now here's where things are a little bit different. Remember that at all of these alpha carbons, there are hydrogens that have now become incredibly susceptible to nucleophilic attack. Because we have this already partially positive carbon that is adjacent to a nitrogen that is positively charged, this is pulling a lot of electron density away from that system. This is going to make the adjacent or alpha carbon partially negative, which is going to make these other protons very susceptible to nucleophilic attack by generating a very strong dipole. This means that our A-, minus, which was formed here, can now come and actually deprotonate one of those hydrogens attached to the alpha carbon. So the alpha carbons are going to be the carbons adjacent to the carbonyl carbon. This means that it will come down and deprotonate, kicking off the electrons to allow us to form a new alkene bond. And in doing so, this will kick up the pi electrons from the carbon to nitrogen double bond, allowing us to generate our final enamine. Now importantly, once we have formed imines and enamines, they can both react with water following the reverse of both of those mechanisms that I just drew for you and undergo hydrolysis under acidic conditions. And this allows us to actually remove these functional groups and what will be regenerated is our starting carbonyl compound. So this gives us another example of a way to install new functional groups by forming imines and enamines, and then subsequently remove them via hydrolysis using water and acidic conditions. Oxymes and hydrozones are two classes of compounds with distinctive chemical properties and are integral to organic synthesis. Both are synthesized through the condensation between an aldehyde or ketone with either hydroxylamine or hydrazine, respectively. That production of hydrozones is really important because it allows us to do what is known as the wolf kishner reduction, where we can actually turn an hydrozone into an alkane chain. So by adding a strong base like potassium hydroxide in the presence of water and adding a lot of heat, what we can actually form is two new hydrogen bonds. So this means that we can actually turn carbonyl functional groups because now we know that we can turn carbonyl functional groups into hydrozones and then subsequently reduce them using what's called the wolf kishner reduction to generate an alkane chain. This reduction proceeds in two distinct steps. First, the carbonyl compound undergoes condensation with hydrazine to form a hydrozone intermediate. Next, under high temperatures in the presence of a strong base, the hydrozone is transformed into the desired alkane through a series of elimination steps. Now, in order to test yourself, let's try some practice problems. I'd love for you to pause the video, try these questions independently, and then resume the video to check my explanations. In the first two questions, they're actually very similar. What you'll notice is that we have two carbonyl compounds reacting with two different secondary amines. And anytime we have a reaction with secondary amines and carbonyl compounds in the presence of catalytic acid, what we'll form are called enamines. So this means that I will form, I will replace that carbon to oxygen double bond with instead a nitrogen bond. And for the first one, this is a five-membered nitrogen-containing heterocycle, specifically pyrrole. And I know that enamines have to have an alkene adjacent to that carbon that's attached to the nitrogen. Therefore, this is the product of the first transformation. For the second one, I have a very similar situation where I have a secondary amine, in this case, diethylamine. So there's also a hydrogen here. I have catalytic acid, and I have the, I'm going to end up losing water in this process. So again, we're going to be forming an enamine. Now, what's different about this one, though, is that we are still going to form our nitrogen here, and we are going to be left with a secondary compound up here. Now notice that the carbon that is attached to that nitrogen is going to now have a double bond, just like it did in this one. For the next reaction, we can actually break it up into two different steps. The first one is going to be forming an imine via this hydrazine compound. In the presence of catalytic acid and losing water, we turn carbonyl compounds into what are called imines. So we will form our imine at that position, 
and this is forming what is called a hydrozone. And then following the hydrozone formation, you were told that you had a strong base with water in the presence of heat. So heat it can be, be written as heat or just delta. And this is actually performing what's called the Wolf-Kishner reduction, wherein you are turning what began as carbonyl carbons into carbon-hydrogen bonds. So at that carbon position where we started with a carbonyl, we are now turning this into an alkane. So therefore, we have first formed our imine, then generating a specific type of imine called a hydrozone, performing the Wolf-Kishner reduction in order to generate our final product, which is an alkane. If you learned anything in today's video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions at all related to chemistry, drop it as a comment down below, and I'd be happy to help you out. I'll see you in the next video.